Hey church, Robbie here, and uh, we just started this uh, month of prayer, uh, talking about our series Shaped Through Prayer at NLCF this past Sunday. And one of the things that we uh, wanted to do, but we didn't think would make it into the teachings on Sundays, uh, would be to share stories about how have Christians have prayed uh, throughout history. And uh, just just of regular people, because you know we're, we're regular people, we want to engage with God in this way through prayer. And so um, uh, so that's what these stories are, are gonna, we're gonna try to do. So we're gonna try to share one each week. Uh, so this week it's, uh, well, it's, it's Women's History Month and Monday was International Women's Day. And so we're gonna talk about a woman. Her name was Susanna. Now Susanna lived in the uh, late 1600s, early 1700s, right outside London. And uh, she was a housewife. Uh, that is kind of her vocation, and, and that, that's what she said her, her vocation was, was, was being a mother and a housewife. Uh, and that was her job. Her husband uh, was a, a preacher, a local preacher at a church, and uh, she had uh, been the daughter of a preacher as well. And so she's, she's grown up in the church. And um, so here's just some of the extraordinary things that happened to her, but you can see some of the difficulties she had in her life as well. Um, she had 19 kids. Um, about 10 of them survived to adulthood. So 19 kids over, over 20 years. Um, her house burnt down that she was in twice. Two of their houses burnt down. Her husband spent uh, time in jail twice. <laughs> and he also left home for like six months to a year uh, one time. And so here's this woman. And she is uh, trying to raise her family the best way she can. And so this is what she does. She educates her children. Um, six hours a day for 20 years. She educated her children in Latin and Greek and poetry, uh, physics, science, you name it. She educated uh, boys and girls. Uh, that's what she did. Uh, besides just teaching them how to do chores and keeping the cow house going as well. Uh, that is one of, I think that's pretty extraordinary. I have two kids and that feels, that feels tiring sometimes. Um, so she educated them. Um, another thing that she did was one time when her husband was gone, uh, he had a replacement teaching at his church, and she was like, I don't, this guy's just not cutting it in terms of, of faithful teaching. So she would grab some uh, sermons the, from her husband and her, her father, and she'd gather her whole family together on Sunday afternoons, and she would do basically another church service. There'd be a hymn and some preaching and, and uh, 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 some scripture reading. And then some of her neighbors got wind of this, and so they asked if they could come, and she said, yeah, sure, come on. So come uh, over time, around 200 people were coming regularly on Sunday afternoons to her house to hear this teaching and to pray together and to seek the Lord together. And uh, the, the local church director was a little bit upset at this because more people were coming to her house than were coming to, um, coming to church. So as you can tell by now, this is an extraordinary woman, and, um, but she's also just doing normal, ordinary things. So one of the things that she would do in her prayer life is because she knew she wanted to spend time with the Lord. She said she wanted to spend more time with God than in an entertainment. Um, so she would spend two hours with God every day. Can you, can, you, can you believe that? And so how would she do that? She's got, you know, a bunch of kids running around uh, doing all, all different ages, doing different things. So she would sit in her kitchen. She would take her apron and uh, she, while well, she would have her Bible, she'd sit in her chair, take her apron and put it over her head as kind of like a tent. And in there she would uh, commune with God. Uh, she would spend time in prayer with him. And uh, I think that sort of ex uh, ordinary, extraordinary, if you get what I mean, uh, determination by this woman to seek the Lord, I think led to some really amazing things happening. Uh, so we talked about the house church thing. Uh, but two of her kids would grow up to found a particular, particularly uh, dynamic uh, branch of, of Christianity. Um, uh, John and Charles Wesley. That's right. This is Susanna Wesley. Her, her sons, John and Charles, uh, founded Methodism. And her mother, their mother would be uh, pretty instrumental in that founding and uh, the beginning stages of Methodism as well. She would pray with them and pray over them. She uh, was a pro prolific writer. Uh, some of her prayer or writings were lost in one of the fires, but we still have some of the writings that she did uh, uh, to this day. And so I know John and Charles would say that they wouldn't be able to do all that without the prayers of their mother and the extraordinary woman that she was. So I hope that this uh, uh, story about just a regular woman outside London 
trying to do her best to seek the Lord and, and teach her kids every day uh, is, is encouraging to you. It's encouraging to me. I love reading about it, and it's, it's just giving me time to think, man, how, how can I uh, more um, uh, circle my life around God and center it around, around what he's doing and uh, let my faith, my faith shine before my kids? Um, so we have more stories like this coming up. And uh, of course, you can look up Susanna Wesley, and uh, she has a wiki page. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, books about her and about the early start of Methodism and just how many thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lives were changed uh, by uh, John and Charles Wesley and their faith to God and 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 through her, their mother, Susanna Wesley. So uh, God bless and I hope you guys have a good week.